next video, we're going to walk through how to style our tables a little bit better. Uh, when I'm building out uh, business applications, I usually find a lot of the information that I use and lists that I build out usually need to be held in a table, so it's important to style those appropriately. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's first take a look at what they look at like right now. So we'll do Rails S and go up to preview port 3000 like I'm sure you're used to by now and click on invoices you can see this looks very ugly so we're gonna uh, start working on fixing this so let's come back here and we'll stop the server and let's build this in a branch so do get checkout dash B and we can just say style dash uh, table. Okay, so we are good to go and get started on building this out. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the view and or app and then views and then go to invoices. And you can see it has a lot of built-in files. When we did the scaffold, it did some things like created a special form, uh, which you can see if you went to the app right now, uh, if you have the server going. And so you can see the forms are uh, where you can integrate all this, and we're going to be customizing this as in one of our next videos. And then the other thing it has is this index page, index.html.erb. This is actually where the table is right now. And so this is what we're going to be working on changing up in this video to give it just a little bit better styling. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up above table and I'm going to create a div. And I'm going to call this div, give it a class, and set that to media. And then I'm going to do another div. So div, class, media, body, and close out that div. And then this table one, we're not going to delete it, we're just going to add to it. So do div, class equals table, space, table, hover. And now let's get the table and we're going to indent this a few times. There we go. And now let's come back below table and finish off our divs. Okay. And let's see if there's anything else that I need to do on this or if this should work. Okay. We'll try this and see if uh, we need to add anything else than we can. So I'm going to do get status, just see all the things that are changed. And if you also notice, and we'll take care of this at the end, uh, when we changed our application CSS file, uh, Git remembers that and we actually need to remove that from the repository. But we'll do that before we push up to, uh, to GitHub and Heroku, so don't worry about that one right now. Uh, right now we've just edited that, so let's get the server going and let's see what it looks like. Okay. Preview and port 3000 and go to invoices. There we go. This is starting to look like a real application now. So you can see this has a lot better look and feel than before. So um, now just a couple things. And this is completely a styling issue. You see these links right over here? Uh, I personally think it would look better if these were buttons. So uh, let's work on actually turning these into buttons now. And to do that, it's actually pretty easy with Bootstrap. So just come back here into the code, and then we're going to just add a class to these items. So uh, the very first thing we're going to do on this uh, show is after where it says show, just give it a comma and then type in class colon and then in parentheses btn space btn dash mini and then we're going to let's just copy all this including the comma and then paste it here and paste it 
let's see, this one I believe that data confirm, I believe this actually has to go at the end. So I'm going to put this right here and then do a comma afterwards. So this is very important or else you're going to get an error. Make sure that method delete has a comma after it, class button button mini has a comma after it, and then there's no comma after this data one. If you try to put this class after the data, you're going to get an error. Um, and so just make sure you have it set up exactly like this. Now the other thing is uh, I want to style these buttons so they're each a little bit different so I'm going to go add a space right after button mini and then I'm going to do BT and when I say BTN or button um, BTN is short for button and it's just a class that you need to use when you're using bootstrap so uh, I'm going to do BTN and then success and then I'm going to copy that including the space put it right after button mini here and I'm going to do BTN dash danger. And all that does is it just gives a different color and makes uh, this color have a different association. So hit save and let's see how this looks. Uh, make sure to do command shift R and look at that. We have a lot better looking buttons but actually this edit one didn't come through so let me see I may have had a little spelling mistake. Yep we need another C in there. Hit save come back, hit refresh, and there you go. So I wanted to do the show buttons in the default kind of gray color, uh, edit in green and destroy in red. And these work just like before. So if I hit edit, it brings us right back here. If I do show, it shows it. And so this is starting to look very nice. So good job if you're following along right here. And in the next video, we're gonna work on adding some more functionality into uh, into the system we're going to be doing things such as adding the ability to search through your data so search through the tables um, and then also we're going to be creating some ways that you can actually filter uh, items or I should say uh, when you click on the, these top headers right here uh, it will actually sort them automatically so if you click on date it'll sort all of the date items uh, automatically by in order and so that's something that I've seen is usually a requirement in most of the projects I do so I wanted to teach you how to do it so we'll be building out some of that functionality here in the next couple videos so I'll see you then